A marijuana came to us, um, I think he was 19 years old, uh, a heroin addict, uh, born in a Muslim family, um, a gangster, and had actually emerged uh, later on, uh, had actually held up at knife point one of our church leaders uh, <laughs> who, five years prior to marijuana coming to us, had prophesied over him as wow. he was being mugged, Gosh. that he was forgiven and that he was a child of God and that he, uh, God had a plan for his life. Marwan came to us five years after that, cold turkeying off heroin, shivering, joint pain, fever, everything. Um, and we were playing um, worship music in the house, and there was a song, No Longer Slaves, that was playing. Um, the, the, the words, I'm no longer a slave to fear, I'm a child of God. And when the song ended, Marwan kind of croaked from his bed, play it again. <laughs> we thought, okay, fine, he's a new guy, he can get what he wants. Uh, we played it again. He just said, kept saying, play it again, play it again. And we said, why? And he said, oh, when that song plays, my withdrawal pains leave. And then he came to a worship night that we hold around the corner and um, that song was was the opening song mm. of the evening and he, he jumped into the middle of the room. You know, bear in mind, he'd never been to church before <laughs> in his life as far as I could yeah. work out. And just said, won't you all pray for me? So we prayed for him and at that moment he received the gift of tongues uh, and the physical withdrawals of coming off heroin instantly left him. And he got saved. Gosh. And so that then his life was then in sort of fast forward. Mm. The next 15 months he was with us, he just grew astronomically, faith-wise and in every way you could imagine. And God gave him a vision of how he could be a change in his community as well and decided, along with a, a friend and colleague of ours, um, to walk from Johannesburg to Cape Town, 1,500 mm. kilometers over 60 days, 38 kilometers a day, um, to raise money and profile and shine a spotlight on the failing school system in Manenberg so that young guys who were on the risk of being expelled, like he was, wouldn't, wouldn't be, and he could make a change. Mm. And on the second day of that walk, he uh, was killed uh, in a car crash. A car just drove, onto, uh, drove into him on the hard shoulder and killed him instantly. And... We were devastated. He was the first guy to come through the yeah, house. Yeah, he had. Yeah. He was an example of everything mm. that we said mm. Jesus uh, would do in people's lives because we knew him to be true, and um, he was cut down short. And, um, and and it felt like that that must have stung even more in a way than the the guys who relapse or whatever, right. because it felt like senseless and like no, that's not the way that story's supposed yeah. to end. God. And people come up with every theology they can. Oh my goodness, you know, well meant, but completely. Yeah misguided of oh it was obviously his time to go mm. or someone even said to me maybe it was because he was going to relapse one day and god you know took yeah. him away before he did you know people just we yeah. make things Which up we try we? to kind of right. square the circle somehow right yeah. and it was it was it was a robbery and uh, that's how we see it but uh, along with as you were uh, uh talking about jesus's crucifixion and death and the resurrection that came um we demanded souls for marwan's life and we prayed that over and over and his mother and his sister and his brother have come to know jesus and uh we made a short film about his life that other friends have shown as they preached in churches and people have come to know jesus through it mm. and um he speaks even though he's dead and his mm. legacy lives on and i think that's the message you know you 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 can kill us, but the, the mm. message, the story mm. of Christianity mm. lives on and transforms.